we got four years. So the, 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 the thing is, um, I'm starting to view, so th we signed this deal with Tech Target that takes us through the end of 2015. So we're down to about three, three years and 10 months left, give or take. And what's starting to happen more is I'm realizing that my, you know, that sort of whatever you call it, chain around my, like the restriction I have, the, the, the lock-in I have, let's say, I'm forced to stay here for another three and a half, you know, four years. Uh, it's not a tech target thing. It's a, it's a Microsoft licensing industry thing. Like, <laughs> I could work at tech target for another 50 years. This is fine. But <laughs> I'm, like, locked into having to deal with fucking, like, bullshit Microsoft licensing policies. Uh, but we're not because the desktop, the future of the desktop is going to change, right? Yeah. So, so, it, so it, it'll all still be there, but it will be less of a percentage of our pie. I need to go cold turkey, man. The only Microsoft application that I use is Office for Mac. I got to get off this thing and figure out something else. Go off that, too? If I get off that, then I'm not giving any money at all to Microsoft. And fuck them and their MVP program. I'm not going to that thing. And so, like, I'm already really working my way out of there. So, um, I th if I can get off Office for Mac, I don't know if that's possible, though, but um, anyway, okay. But what if... Well, so, we have Claudio for just a few more minutes, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's get back to his thing. All right, then. man. So, Claudio, talk. so you got the small VDI environment, and... Gay was saying that you wanted to build it yourself because it's like a pride of ownership thing as opposed to paying like, you know, two cloud or desk tone or something like that. It's not only that, like when you go through the, the licensing, these providers are, you know, they have in place some like, uh, which one you gave me the link, Gabe, uh, uh, well, to, two cloud, to cloud. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, for example, there is a minimum buy-in that is like 50 desktops per month. So that's the, the first problem. The second funny problem is it's a, a bring your own VDA license deal. So if you go through their agreement, you need to bring your own VDA licenses. So it's like, man, I just want to get a, a fucking desktop. Like, I don't want to bring my licenses. You know what? But you have to have You're... licenses for your solution. I, I think, hang on, I think that this is, I think that this solution is too small to use desktops in the cloud. Um, That's like it. It's the li licensing about how there's no SPLA license for Windows. So, so in this situation, two cloud can't have can't just take these three Windows desktops and sh and put them on the same host that they're using oh. for some other company. Why doesn't he just use OnLive? Because <laughs> clearly <laughs> they don't have the problems with Windows SPLA and you know, <laughs> ten bucks oh. per user per month. It's American, which is now the weak currency too. So, um, yeah. Except, well, if they're in Canada, though, we already know that uh, the internet connection isn't all that great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. why we kept in house. <laughs> but so, so my point, though, is that w since, since they have to dedicate hardware to each specific customer, then to have three desktops running on a server is ridiculously expensive per desktop. And so that's why they have to make you do 50 to make it cost effective for their price model to work with with with, with their with their infrastructure, yeah, so, probably the case. So so I, I I think that and and I didn't think about this before, but I think that there's actually probably a minimum threshold until w Microsoft gets a SPLA license in place for Win Seven. Um, that I think there's a, a a low end of this threshold too, so that you know at, at some point you're too small and you have to roll your own VDI if you want those features. So my question, okay, so so brings it apart too. Um, if your business requirement, Claudio, is to deliver these desktops to these users, and you want to build it in-house, that's fine. Uh, why, I mean, you've got VDI, I, I don't know, like why not just buy a few desktops and then use something like log me in and just have like three physical desktops, which by the way, then you don't need any um, SA either. You can just have the regular, pardon me. No, oh, that's a that, that's a good point. Like uh, as as a logmin user as well, I, I can give you the you know the feedback on using both solutions. You know, performance. If you we compare, like just usability, how it works, I would say logmin is a great solution, but it's still not there. Like you know, it's not the same as going through whatever RDP or or, or Citrix and desktop. Why not yeah, use you RDP use then? Day. Why not to use RDP? Yeah. Well, then you need uh, something. Yeah, uh, it can be done. Yes, it was just the the ease of 
use of uh, Zen Desktop being available on other platforms. Wait, oh, Zen Desktop is available thing. for free too. Oh, so it's you, free. Oh, 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 use oh, oh, Zen oh, 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 Express and ESX. So it's not, it's not exactly. A, yeah, oh, okay. So there, was no, there was no pay for I'm that. I'm on board. But why, so why not use terminal services then on an even more lightweight box? Um, although, oh, well, yeah. I guess in that situation, then you have to buy a server license. But you still, do you, you still you need, need a Windows server for you Zen Desktop Express, right? Well, the reality is everyone, oh, yes, you still need it like we had to buy, but the, the reality is all these guys, they have several different devices. Like everyone has like an iPad or whatever it is, and they want to access from anything. Mm -hmm. You know, even though they are small, but they are still using these things, iPads, iPhones, uh, whatever. And that's where the Zen Desktop 3 fits, you know, perfectly. Man. All right, I got uh, there's an there's an article there getting getting priced out of doing VDI for small organizations because of SPLA. We're just gonna rail on Microsoft. We should have like fuck Microsoft week. <sighs> oh my and gosh, and VMware could sponsor. Or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> you know if you go to our search VMware <laughs> site, all the ads are from Microsoft, right? So <laughs> let's <laughs> one article series and we retire. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, I um, this is just. <laughs> you know, and I guess getting back to this, this is to Jack's point. It's like, hey, what can we do? It's, it's like we can revolutionize from within, you know, like we can be champions of trying to move off of the Windows platform. But it's crazy because it's easy for us to move off of the Windows platform because we don't have any real applications. But for companies, you know, it only requires one Windows application and then they have to have the whole Windows desktop and all this garbage and on and on and on. Um, yeah, we have. <laughs> Ron Oglesby <laughs> says, you guys have become the anti-Microsoft site. That is a true statement. <laughs> no objections. Next question. <laughs> um, so anyway, so Claudio, so I, I never thought about it. So the Zen Desktop Express, it didn't even occur to me. I mean, I kind of forgot that that really even exists. But I guess in your case, so you have literally just one server, ESXi, so it's free, Zen Desktop Express. You have to buy your three... SA or VDA licenses or whatever you're using, and um, I guess probably one server, one Windows server license, right? And that that's it. That's it. Yeah, all done. And then you're. And I'm sure there's nothing. Yeah, I mean, this is these are all you know persistent VMs one to one. There's nothing complex going on here. It's just it's three individual terminal servers. Um, exactly. Very simple. Yeah. And it and it and and so and and so you can. You said you can support. You've got room for a few more people on that one server, but Zen Desktop Express will support up to ten users. This is a great commercial for Zen Desktop Express, and they're not even paying us. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, so really, I mean, this solution does work pretty well. And so, what did you say you were out total, like six grand? Yeah, because you know we bought a, a little better server, and we got a NAS like a QNAP. So we, you don't need to go as fancy as we tried to do, but. Mm -hmm. You can probably do like a small, like I did for myself. Actually, I did everything similar for under two, under two k. And is mm. that okay, so? Again, why why did you go the VDI route instead of terminal server? Well, in this case, you know, it, it was just a better compatibility with whatever crap they may want to bring down the road. So it's just, you know, if they want to install something, I don't need to worry about, oh, will this work properly? Do I have to change this or that? It, it just works. I guess you don't have to administer this also because you can say there's three computers. They're, they understand that. They can have administrative rights. They can do whatever. Yeah. Yeah, very simple. And as I was mentioned to Gabe, like even the, the file shares that we, you know, you have like a shared folder for company data, for example, it's inside the Dropbox share. So we are sharing a, a subfolder of Dropbox. Yeah, yeah. So whatever they dump there, it's automatically backed up to Dropbox, yeah. to the cloud. And then they can access, you know, from home, from an iPad, from whatever. And, and if their one server goes down, they host all their desktops, they still have access to the data. Yes, and if the server goes down, as I said, like the, the VMs, they are stored on the external... NAS, so it's just a matter of bringing up a new box and pointing to the same storage, and you are back online. The VMs are stored in the external NAS. They're not actually running from the external NAS, right? Are they just backed up there somehow? No, no, they're running off the the external NAS. Oh wow! Three users, you can do fun stuff like that because it's yeah, oh, yeah, true. exactly. It's three users yeah. over a gigabit connection on a three foot cable. 
So that's it. Ice cuz yeah. Um what is uh how about VDI in a box? Well, I don't do they have like a free 10 user thing for no. VDI in a box? No, and that and that's why not right there cuz it's not free. <laughs> and that's exactly. why not. <laughs> and, and that's why they don't do it because then people <laughs> if they're targeting for under 50 users like percent, yeah. percentage wise they'd have to have like free like one third of a user. You can have one user who can use it every alternating day. And that's that's their free solution. Otherwise they're losing money. That's huh. pretty much it, yeah. 